Hey guys, welcome to Introduction to Low Pass Filters. So we're going to talk about low pass filters, uh, how they're used, the math behind them, and give a sample calculation for how we can design a low pass filter. So first of all, what is a low pass filter and why would anybody need to use one? Well, in electrical engineering, sometimes we want to build a circuit so the output of that circuit only allows certain frequencies to pass through. So that's where it gets its name low pass filters. It traditionally or typically only allows low frequencies to pass through. So if I draw what's known as a frequency response plot, meaning I have my frequency on the x-axis and then I have the gain of the circuit on the y-axis, a low pass filter essentially says that I'm going to allow frequencies to pass through up until some arbitrary voltage or sorry up until some arbitrary frequency and then after this frequency that I've designed the circuit to have it's going to start uh, dramatically reducing the output or the magnitude of the output of the circuit and anything past that particular frequency, it will not allow them to pass. It will not allow the those frequencies to pass. So this is what a low pass filter intends to accomplish. So what does a low pass filter look like in terms of electrical engineering circuits? Well, a very simple use case is actually an RC filter or an RC circuit. So I have my circuit where I have a capacitor and I have a resistor. I have an input voltage. I have an output voltage. And I have my resistor and my capacitor. So how does this circuit determine what this graph looks like when I want to only allow certain frequencies to pass and other frequencies not to pass? Well, it's this little magical variable called the cutoff frequency. Also known as F of C. So the cutoff frequency is essentially a variable that states that whenever the cutoff frequency is achieved, you have reached half power output or roughly 70.7% voltage output. Well, that's not what this graph looks like. This graph looks like after a certain frequency, I just absolutely stop allowing anything to pass. Well, that's actually not exactly how they work. They actually work like this. So if I have the frequency on the x-axis and I have the gain of my circuit on the y-axis, they typically look like this. So gain is typically described in dBs because it's a power signal. So the cutoff frequency is described as when negative 3 dB is reached. I know that that exact moment on the frequency response plot is when the cutoff frequency has been achieved. So as soon as I hit negative 3 dBs, I know at this point here, I'm actually at half power or a roughly 70% voltage output. So how do I design this circuit to have a cutoff frequency for my particular application? Well we can actually write the cutoff frequency equation as 1 over 2 pi 
times tau, which is the time constant, or 1 over 2 pi times RC. So for an RC circuit, tau, the time constant, is equal to RC. So if I want to have, let's say, a cutoff frequency of 300 hertz, I can actually solve for RC to be equal to 1 over 2 pi times 300. So if you number crunch this here and you get the math, you can basically go ahead and pick your R value and your C value so that this equation is true. And if that equation is true, and you use these values in your circuit, then you can go ahead and rest assured that your cutoff frequency will be equal to 300 hertz. And everything after this will be rapidly diminished. So that's essentially, in a nutshell, what low-pass filters are. And I hope this video was uh, helpful to, you, those, to those of you out there who are actually trying to figure out what low-pass filters are and how you can use them. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.